the strength that comes. I, I have, uh, would just encourage you with the words of the Apostle Paul that he would say, you know, I, I would that you pray for us that the Word of God would have free course. And I think that this is so evident in the lives of people today that prayer is something that needs to be given free course in the lives of people. I, I feel like that in this time and in this season of our life, we need to really reflect upon what God is doing and that the Word of God would have free course in the lives of those that we have to do. I mean, we come in contact with people even though folks are isolating. We, we deal with people at the grocery store. I've been a, made it a point to smile, be an encouragement, uh, whether it's somebody stocking the shelves or whether it's somebody bringing us out of the grocery aisle. I believe that it's important that we reflect a beautiful expression of God's grace and allow the presence of God to reflect off of our lives. Because we should be a light in a dark place. Amen? Uh, they we're going to do a song this morning that simply says, uh, Have you heard of a city on the hill? I, I believe that God would have us to have a time and an understanding in our life that we are a city on a hill if we are the children of the Most High. So the Apostle Paul, in his address in prayer, he says, I would that you would uh, pray for us that the Word of God would have free course in the lives of those in which we have to do. Because not everybody has faith. Amen. I don't know if you figured it out or not, but some people get angry when you talk about faith, when you talk about standing on the Word of God. I, I want you to know that you don't have to be uh, in a place of hiding. You don't have to be a place of fear, knowing that God's grace is appointed unto you to carry out the Word of the Lord. So I'm reminded of that, and I want to just uh, go over here to 1 Timothy as the Apostle Paul was addressing a young man, encouraging him to stand in the faith, to encourage others, and to be not swerved or taken away from the things that he has been appointed to do. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, this is the address of the Apostle Paul to young Timothy. It says, exhort therefore that first of all, how many know that we need to do first things first? And we can reflect upon the word of the Lord in first step. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, we're in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. The word of the Lord says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, and I think that there is a, a humbling in the experience that we're having right now. If we would humble ourselves in the presence of the Lord and pray that God would heal our land, that He would forgive us our sins. And a lot of folks are saying, well, what sins are you talking about? And what sins have the nation committed? I'm not saying that everybody that's in church and everybody that's a, a Christian today is responsible for the sins of everyone, but that we do need to pray for the national sins of our nation. There's a lot of things that have happened literally through the courts and through the, the government that we are responsible for because we voted for things. We, we allowed things. So guess what? When you look at Nineveh, God sent Jonah the prophet to a land and he says, these people are dead set against my word. And we can tell the story with the, uh, with the children about the, uh, Jonah and the whale. But let me tell you this, the people of Nineveh were sin sick. And God was at a point where that he was going to destroy them if they did not repent. And I reflected on that. I think about the stories that I was taught even as a child. And I begin to pray for the people of the land because there is a great deal of sin sickness in the United States of America. Not that we see it every day, but it's almost like that, that undertow of things that are happening behind the scenes. Spiritual wickedness in high places that governs and reduces the life of humanity almost to nothing. And so what do you do about that, Pastor? How, how can we, as the people of God, make a difference in the land? Well, I can tell you this. It's by promoting the Word of God in your own lifestyle. You know, it's wonderful to come to church, and I get excited being in church. But there's a place that's at a higher ministry level that the Word of the Lord says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. Now, I believe that we need to begin to pray one for another. How many of you know that the Word of the Lord says that men ought always to pray and to lift up their holy hands before the Lord, seeking the face of God? Not just for what I want, but the things that we need. I'm believing that God is going to begin to open up a realm of authority in the life of the believer, that kings, for those that are in authority, and for many that lead a quiet, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. 
For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God and Savior. So what are you talking about, Pastor? I'm saying that we need to come to that place in our walk with God. That we're not just praying for our needs. Have you ever noticed that when you, when you, when you begin to ask for prayer, it's all about what I need or what I want? How about we begin to pray in the Spirit as spoken of in the book of Jude and we seek the face of God for what He wants. In the book of Romans it says that when the, the, he will, the Spirit of God will help our infirmities of the flesh. What flesh is He talking about? Those things that we feel like that are so important to us. You know, God is working the plan and I feel like that the prayer of agreement is more important than what my personal feelings may be. So what do you need to do, Pastor? I say we need to get in agreement with God's Word and begin to pray for the national sins of this nation and the nations of the world. Mm -hmm. The things that we have allowed. You know, the Word of the Lord says in the book of Amos uh, that the Word of the Lord is not slack concerning His promise concerning those of unjust scales. I don't know if you know this or not, but the Word of the Lord says that there were those that would say, how long until the new moons be passed until we can buy the poor for a, for a shackle of, of, of wheat and we can buy the needy for a pair of shoes. Now, I don't know if you understand this or not, but the word of the Lord says, I will never forget this. What does that mean? That means that judgment is coming. And isn't it interesting how that all around the world, everybody's saying, don't judge me, don't judge me. But the word of the Lord says that the time is now that judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. So what's happening? The enemy is trying to silence the church, empty the church house, uh, and get us to a place that we don't hear the voice of God. How many know that in the last days there's going to be pestilence? There's going to be earthquakes in diverse places? There's going to be all kinds of natural disasters taking place? And the word of the Lord says, be not soon shaken concerning this. The end is not yet. In other words, there's a time and a preparation period that God is allowing us to get ready for the coming of the Lord. So it's important that we begin to pray. Not only does the Apostle Paul pray to, to, to let folks receive the word of the Lord and hear the message of the cross, but also that we would pray for those that are in authority and in leadership over us that we may live quiet and peaceable lives. Not just so we can get stuff. You don't understand what I'm saying? A lot of folks are, are looking for the free stuff. But let me tell you something. Salvation is not free. It costs the life of Christ Jesus. It costs the blood of God's only Son. Listen, when we begin to understand some things about what God wants to do in these last times, uh, we need to be about the Father's business, accomplishing the things whereunto He has sent us to do. It's not just to sit back and say, well, I wonder what we should do during these troublesome times. Uh, we're not just to sit back and wring our hands uh, and wonder where, where we're going to get our next loaf of bread or our next roll of toilet paper. God will make provision for all things. People are hoarding and grabbing and, and greed is set in. You know, I think that more so than any kind of virus, the virus is man. The, the sickness is the, the deeds and the greed of man. When you begin to look at what people are doing during this time, it's pathetic. And I think about how the word of the Lord says, even as, as we look at the prophets, uh, and, and there was one place where the, the prophet said, you know, I have some things against you, Lord. There's some things that you've forgotten me in here. And, and the Lord said, if footmen have wearied you, where are you going to stand in the floodplain of Jordan? If you can't contend against these things, how are you going to stand when the enemy really comes? So what we have a responsibility to do is to declare the word of the Lord. I have been making declarations and decrees uh, out my back door. I have been speaking to the winds. Uh, how many know that the winds still know his name? And as we begin to declare the word of the Lord, and as we begin to pray and intercede, the, you know what? We need to begin to say, Lord, I, you know, we, re, we need to bring a, a level of repentance and, and revival to the land that is going to literally transform cities. I heard someone say that uh, this coronavirus has done something that women could never do. You think about this. They have shut down all sports. The beer joints are closed. And their men are at home. You think about that. So could God use that to get the family around the table again for a moment? Could God use that to get dads in a place where they're concerned for their families uh, instead of being the boys to play cards? 
It is a, it's a place where, listen, you, you don't know that we may be cursing this thing and it may be God saying, look, it's time to shut it down, boys, uh, and begin to look at what's happening in your home. Uh, your children need a father. Your wife needs a husband. Uh, and wife needs to be two people evaluating the place that we're in. God is calling husbands uh, to be the porters of their house and to stand in the counsel of God's word. Listen, he said that he's coming for a pure and spotless bride. Now, how did you get this? Uh, the word of the Lord says yet and again that there will be a shaking of the heavens and the earth. Because the gold is mine and the silver is mine. And the glory of the latter house uh, is going to be greater than the former house. Uh, that has not yet come to pass yet. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, there is a revival on the horizon. Uh, there is an awakening that is coming uh, that is going to cause men and women, boys and to forsake the lawless land and to forsake the cares of their ways and seek God for themselves. This is the purpose I believe that God is bringing us into even in this season so that men might be saved. You see, God is not slack concerning His promise as some men count slackness when it comes to the coming of the Lord. I've heard people say, well, Pastor, I've heard this since I was a child that Jesus is coming. And I said, and he is. He's coming soon. It's sooner than before. I believe that there's going to be a trumpet sound. And God is going to say, go get my children. And Jesus is going to step over the sapphire seal of heaven. And the word of the Lord says there's going to be a major earthquake. And Jesus will stand with one foot upon the, uh, the, the sea and one foot upon the Mount of Olives. And there's going to be a mighty earthquake take place. I read it over there in the book of Ezekiel. The prophet spoke it and it's coming. I, re I remember stepping up over there into Israel as we were, were there with Perry Stone and we walked into the catacombs uh, under the, 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 the temple mount and we walked all the way back even to the steps where Jesus would have ministered on the south steps. And Gideon spoke of an underground water system that was already running out and trickling across those steps. It's amazing to see. But there, the water was just about the depth of your soles of your shoes, running out over through the Kidron Valley and drizzling up. You know that they believed the Word of God so much there that the history of God's Word, the, the nation of Israel has already created a floodplain so that when the waters come out, when the earthquake takes place, Many don't know this, but even this year, as we approach Passover, do you realize what the enemy is doing across the nations of the world? A lot of people are not opening their eyes for the book or listening to the things that are happening in Israel as to the things that are getting ready to happen in the earth. This year, this year, for the first time in 2,000 years, the Orthodox priests are preparing for Passover. And there will be a blood sacrifice on the Temple Mount for the first time in 2,000 years. See, the Muslims have controlled it, but something happened. A shift took, listen, a shift took place when President Donald Trump stepped up and declared Jerusalem as the capital city. And they took back the land. Let me tell you something. A lot of people got angry about it, but I'll tell you who else was mad about it. The good old devil. Yeah. Or the man of the devil. However you want to call Lucifer, that slew-footed beast uh, that tries you, that tempts you, that is the accuser of the brethren day and night. Uh, the word of the Lord says uh, that in the last day uh, that there would be sacrifices begin again before the coming of the Lord. It's setting up the, the abomination of desolation. Uh, that when the word of the Lord says that he will rise up and call himself God, uh, that that is the time that Jesus is coming. And, it's, and listen, they're, they're already preparing for that. I, I watched some video clips of, of them setting the altar in place on the Temple Mount. And something leaked inside of me. Somebody said, well, it, that, that blood sacrifice means nothing. Jesus is our sacrifice. Jesus is our Passover lamb. Exactly. But let me tell you something. It is the fulfilling of Scripture's prophecies uh, that these things must be uh, before the end comes. Uh, so get ready, folks, uh, as we begin to look at the Word of God. I'm not saying that He's coming uh, on Passover, but I'm telling you that He could. I'm not telling you that He's coming tomorrow, but He could. So let me tell you this, as we begin to 
reflect upon what the word of the Lord says to pray without ceasing. That we are to allow, sound the alarm, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm, and let the word of God go forth as a powerhouse demonstrate. Listen, I don't have all the answers and I don't know all that is to be known. But I see things by the Spirit of God that are setting up that place of, in time where the Jesus is returning. And I'm believing that we as the church may not stand back in fear and wring our hands up over where we want to get toilet paper. I, I believe that this is a distraction. This is a mindset that the enemy is trying to, to create confusion. Let me tell you this. The wisdom of God is first pure, then peaceable. It's easy to be entreated. It's full of mercy without partiality and without hypocrisy. And it's so in peace of them that make peace. But the wisdom of the world let me tell you something. The wisdom of the world, there is confusion in every evil work. You listen to me. Because when fear begins to grip a man's heart, I shared this uh, uh, over the podcast uh, on Wednesday night. Fear grips the man's heart. What was it that Job said? The thing I feared the most has come upon me. Let me tell you this. When you begin to walk in fear, when you begin to walk in intrepidation, you become in a place where you're tormented. You're controlled by your fears. Faith liberates you and begins to give you the opportunity to stand above the fear and declare the word of the living God and know that He is faithful that promised. Because it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. It is no longer my ability, uh, but the ability uh, of my Heavenly Father. Uh, let me tell you something uh, about the grain of mustard seed. Uh, once it's put in ground, uh, once it begins to grow, that grain of mustard seed, uh, faith is just like that. Uh, it will grow up even to a point uh, where there is lodging uh, for animals and, and birds. Uh, let me tell you this, God has a purpose to fulfill in these last days for you. And it is to you to be used as a glory piece for God. See, the Word of God has been given you as an instrument of His glory to be used in these last days uh, to strengthen the brethren, to exhort those that are weak, uh, to lift up those hands that hang down uh, and make straight paths for those feeble knees. Uh, that's why there's correction. Uh, that's why there's reproof. Uh, that's why there's instruction in righteousness. Uh, that the man of God, that the woman of God may be firm unto every good work. Listen to me now. I want you to see this because we need to understand some things about faith. The word of the Lord says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You may not be able to see it, but a whole lot of folks are worried about something they haven't even seen yet. And when we look at the word of the Lord, I, I, I was declaring this last night I, over, over a, a friend of mine. I said, you know what? The word of God says, he that dwells in the secret place uh, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And yes, there's going to be pestilence, uh, which are plagues. Yes, there's going to be uh, fiery darts or, or arrows that fly by day, which are going to attack your faith. When I look back at what the word of the Lord says about the shield of faith, uh, wherewith you are able to quench all. The fiery darts of the wicked and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'm going to tell you something. We need to armor up, folks. And I'm not talking about my soul and hand sanitizer. We need to armor up with the word of God because he said, No plague shall come nigh your dwelling. You may witness it with your eyes. A thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you because you have made him your habitation. A lot of folks say, well, well, pastor, you're scourging me and you're, you're spanking me because I have not faith. No, I believe that if you're sick, you need to stay at home. I believe that if you are in a place where that you're vulnerable, you need to protect yourself at all costs. But let me tell you something. Those that have known their God shall be strong and do great exploits in the last days going forth in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. The one said it's not our power and it's not by might, but it's by His Spirit, says the Lord. So let me tell you something. In the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And there's a liberty to flow in the giftings of His Spirit. Look at what the Scripture says. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For they that come to God must first believe that He is, and that He's a rewarder of those that 
diligently seek Him. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should afterwards receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not knowing where he went. Listen, there's some uncertainties in life. You know that? Did, did, is, there, is anybody in, uh, that's watching my live stream that can put on their amen? Because I'm going to tell you something. There's some uncertainties in life. Yes, yes. But God. When I begin to look at the word of the Lord and he says that he is a strong tower the righteous run into and shall find safety. Let me tell you something. God's presence is there to minister to every need in your life. And let me tell you this. By faith Abraham went out when he was called to go. He left father. He left mother. He left family. Everybody but a lot which he should have left. Maybe he just tacked the law. But in reality... He left knowing that the word of God he was receiving in his spirit was of faith. And because of faith it was accounted to him as righteousness. By faith he sojourned in a strange land. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob. The heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker was God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seen and was delivered of a child when she was past the age of her ability to do so. Therefore spring there even of one and him as good as dead as many as the stars of the sky and multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith not having received the promise but having seen them afar off and were persuaded I want you to know this morning that I'm persuaded. Like the Apostle Paul would say in another place, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things past, nor things present, nothing in my future, nothing is able to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. When you have that kind of persuasion in your spirit, when you have that kind of persuasion in your life, you're going to look at things differently than what others look like. That's why you're able to speak life when everybody else is speaking death. That's why you're able to encourage when everybody else is discouraged. That's why you're able to say, you know what? I am in relationship with a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can even ask or think. I have not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has entered in the heart of man the things that God has promised them that believe and love Him. But the Spirit of God will give you wisdom and revelation to see these things that are coming. I'm going to tell you something this morning that God has a purpose for everything. And for everything, there is a purpose under heaven. And in this season of our life, it is the most masterful blessing of God for us to be able to snatch those that are in fear, in doubt, and in unbelief. To encourage them. I pray for doctors and nurses all across the land, especially in those areas that are heaviest hit, in Louisiana and over in New York City. And I believe in God to minister to those that are on their way to serve and to bless. And I intercede on their behalf. The word of the Lord says to do so. Greater still, we have a responsibility to our families and those that we serve with right here in our own backyards. That we nurture them, encourage them, and give them the word of faith. Because I'm going to tell you something. In this time and in this season, the word of the Lord is most precious and powerful to them that believe. I realize to those that believe not the word of the Lord, it's foolishness. I've been, said to, I've been told people that, oh, you believe that stuff? Do you mean that? I said, I sure do. One young man said, keep it. I said, I believe I will. I've spent the last uh, nearly 50 years preaching the Word of God, uh, administering God's grace uh, over people's lives and seeing signs, wonders, uh, and miracles take place, uh, not because of me, uh, but because God watches over His Word to perform it into the lives of those uh, that would receive His Word. Amen. You see, it's important for us to know that it's the power of God that will change your life. When you get to the place that you're ready to say, yes, Lord. I'm, res I'm responsible as a messenger of Christ to deliver the word of the Lord. 
See, I'm a debtor. I, I'm in debt to the gospel. A debt that I could never repay. And God placed a, a, a blessing in my life that uh, you know, I understand what the Apostle Paul meant when he says, I, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord Jesus. I, I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything but preach the word of the Lord. God has imparted things in my life uh, that I can never let go. I've experienced things in Him uh, through healing, uh, through deliverance, uh, through seeing the things of God minister to people. I but can speak the word of God. So this is the thing that we need to understand. That as God begins to release these things in our life, uh, there's going to be those that are going to die not having seen the promise of God. The word of the Lord gives uh, a witness to that. But listen, the word of the Lord said, uh, choose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. This is what Jesus says. Uh, the word of God says, uh, Moses, uh, when, when he was come to years, he refused to be called Pharaoh's daughter's son. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You know, we, we wonder why is it that the world is in the shape it's in? It's because people have chosen rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin, though it's but for a season. Because I can tell you what the Word says. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. When we come to that understanding, we'll have a clear direction. This is what the Scripture says. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he, in, for he endured as seeing him as invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? God began to look at some things on Moses' heart. And Moses said, you know what? I'm going to keep the Passover. Do you realize? I don't know if even people realize this, Will, but I believe that the enemy is trying to shut down the Passover in this season. He can't do it. Because, he, listen, I will celebrate the Passover if I have to do it alone in my home. I will celebrate the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ having cleansed me of all sin and unrighteousness if I have to do it with my wife and family. But can I tell you this? In the presence of God, when, when the, the people were huddled in their homes, there was those that were at the head of the house struck the doorpost with the blood of the Lamb. Let me tell you something. The blood is still there. And when we understand that, there ain't no devil in hell can steal the Passover from you. Moses, uh, looking ahead, he, he through faith kept the Passover. By faith he passed through the Red Sea as dry land. And, and the Egyptians is saying to, to, to were downward and they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down. After they were compassed about seven days by faith, Rahab the harlot perished not with them that believed not. When she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jehovah, Jehoshaphat, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. Obtained promises. Stopped the mouths of lions. Quenched the violence of fire. Escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Marched violent. Without vigilant in the fight. Turned to fight the armies of the aliens. Uh, women received their dead raised again to life. Uh, and others were, were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Uh, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials of uh, cruel mockings and scourgings. They were over of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. They were tempted. They were slain. With the edge of the sword, they wandered about sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and torment, of whom the whole world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report, through faith received not the promise. God having provided them better things for us, they without us should not be made perfect. I believe that we need to have an understanding of the times. I don't know about you, but on the way home from Kroger's the other day with the back of my suburban filled with groceries and the needs of the house, 
Last night I, I've opened the pantry and I haven't been to the grocery in a few days. There is enough food to feed an army. The freezer is full. The pantry is full. And God has blessed us so supernaturally. And you know what? I would rather say and give and say that most of us are in the same ship. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. And God has made provision even in a time where there seems to be lack. And God will continue. I have said before and I will declare it again that when the lights were out in Egypt, they were all in Goshen. And God God is even right now bringing a level of understanding to people in order that they may cry unto the Lord. Yet they look to man for advice and man for the wisdom to get them through. It's not there. I have been preaching for the last several weeks uh, over uh, the, the, the Skype streaming, whatever you would call it. And I will tell you this, that this virus will leave as fast as it came. And people will stand in a wonderment saying, how, how did this happen? And I believe that the power of God is able to keep the hearts of men and women that stand strong in Him. Yes. And the purpose of God's blessing is to bring us to that level. See, we have become so comfortable in our use. We have become so comfortable in our car. Many of us don't take the Word of God home with us. We'll leave it in the car. We'll leave it in the pew. We, we, we don't open the Word of God to say, Lord, speak to my spirit in this season of my life on a daily basis. Sometimes He is used as a, a social outlet to get together and share with one another. I'm going to tell you something. It's more than just coming to hear the preacher talk. It's more than just coming to see the message of, of what's coming about even today. It's about relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ that, that will transform you. And when you know Him, like He wants you to know Him, there is no fear, there is no doubt that He is on your side. That's why the Apostle Paul, I believe the word of the Lord says was given a, a, a messenger sent from Satan, you know, that he had such revelation and wisdom and the power of God through the Spirit that dwelt in his life. I, I, I began to think about this because there was a messenger sent from Satan, which was called a thorn in his flesh. Wednesday night we talked about the flesh and how that the carnal man is at enmity with God. Have you ever seen a time where the carnality rules and reigns in the nation of America? Well, can I tell you this, that God is not pleased with that. Do you think for one minute that child trafficking and sex trafficking can occur without people in high position knowing about it? I believe that there are key people in high positions that know everything that is happening in the land. Whether it be drug trafficking or child trafficking. And I'm believing that according to the word of God, he's about to say it's enough. Judgment is surely coming. Families and regions ravaged with drug addiction. No hope. No expectancy of a better day. Well, can I tell you that God is giving us an expectancy of a better day. We, we're listening. We're, we're going to hear the word of God like we've never heard it before. Because it's not just going to be words that are spoken. There's going to be action taken. You know, I believe that there's an old proverb that says it like this. Yeah, I've heard that before and it's been spoken over this city before and it's never come to pass. The Lord says He's going to do away with that proverb and when the word of the Lord is spoken, it shall come to pass. And I'm believing that God is going to raise up a generation of Joshua's that are going to stand and fight, not with sword and spear and sling and with, the, with chariots and horses, because I believe that while some people will trust in chariots and horses, there's a people that God is raising up that is going to trust in the name of our God. So when we begin to pray, I believe that instead of praying, Lord, help us get more money so we can build a bigger house or build, drive a better car, uh, maybe we need to begin to say, Lord, give us power uh, in our prayers uh, that we may silence uh, the naysayers. Uh, Lord, give us strength 
uh, to stand against the drug dealer, uh, to get them saved. Uh, Lord, let us go to the places uh, that the enemy doesn't want us. Uh, do you realize where Jesus would be today? A lot of folks don't. Oh, he, he'd be over there at that big church. No, he wouldn't be in the church today. I would venture to say that he would probably be among the, the, the sinners and those that were in need of salvation. I'm believing that God is going to begin to raise up some generals in his army uh, that are going to speak to drug addicts. Uh, and not just drug addicts, uh, but drug dealers. You see, we're coming into a season right now, a lot of people don't know it, but the greatest transference of wealth took place with Cyrus's decree. Listen to this. Somebody needs to get hold of this. And it's not about wealth, folks. It's about the kingdom. It's about the work of the ministry. The greatest transference of wealth will come in the end times. The word of the Lord says so. Whether the wealth of the wicked has been laid in store for the righteous. And I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be some folks that are disappointed because they have saved, they have stolen, they have embezzled, they have, they have grappled. And I'm believing that God is going to give it to the saints to do the work in the last days. You've never seen the, the, the accomplishments that are about to be about. You talk about food pantries. You talk about the blessing of people with homes. You talk about blessing people with automobiles and the ability to pay for insurance. God is about to transfer wealth. And it's not so I can buy a new plane. Come on now, we've got to be serious about this. Because a whole lot of preachers think, oh, I need that new jet. No, it's not about no jet. It's not about a new Escalade. It's not about a, a, a room full of ties. It's about the Word of God. Listen, when the seed of God's Word is planted in good soil, let me tell you something. Change is coming. Yes. Somebody needs to shout at this morning. Change is coming. To the power of God and the anointing of God that is going to break every yoke. Amen. And as we begin to open our hearts and our spirits to that, I'm believing that God is going to begin to allow us to see. What did I say a little earlier? That I have not seen nor ear heard. There's some things that God is about to reveal to the saints that it will be ready for. Too many people have prophesied false prophecies so long that they don't know the truth and they're still trying to pick up on what Brother So-and-So said, Brother So-and-So's book said. You better believe that God has a purpose to fulfill in this hour. He said, Behold, I'm going to make all things new. Hallelujah. You're going to see visions and dreams like you've never experienced before. There's going to be transformations of things where you thought it was this way, but then you're going to realize it was that way. And God is going to reveal Himself in ways that you've never thought possible. You see, He is Jehovah Rophe, our healer. He is Jehovah Sitkanu. He is Jehovah Shama, our peace. Yes. You know how many people don't have peace this morning? Almost like they're angry with God. My nephew said to me the, the, just the other night, he said he was talking with someone and they said, well, I have a right to be angry with God. He said, wait a minute, you better, you don't say that again. And the reality of it is, is there's a lot of people that are angry with God. But I can tell you this, the Lord knows what you have and what you need. And the blessings of God maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. And as you walk out and fulfill the giftings and the callings of God upon your life, the word of the Lord says that in the last days, He's going to pour His Spirit out upon all flesh without measure. So, well, how, how is that going to accomplish what we need to see? Listen, we have a, a little bit of time to do the work that God has set for us to do. And Satan has come down with great wrath knowing that he has but a short time. So he's turning it up. But guess what? God has turned it up also in the saints of God that are moving forward with power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Life's changing very fast. And the needs that we have are being met as quickly as they are coming. Thus the word of the Lord says that the reapers are going to overtake the sowers in the last days. We need to loose the word of God. We need to release the word of God in the lives of individuals. That they may be reapers that 
are coming us that have need. I believe that God is giving many inventions and breakthroughs even now. You may not realize it, but right now in the laboratory, uh, there are those praying uh, in Jerusalem, uh, believing God for, for breakthroughs. And, and listen, and, and many kinds of diseases that have yet even been told. God is giving witty inventions in the lives of those that are seeking His direction and counsel. It's not told that there's prayer meetings that go on three times a day in the White House. Oh, yeah. That's not put on the news, is it? No, it's not. Well, wonder why? Because the liberal media wants to control the nation and debilitate her to a place of servanthood. God wants you to be able to speak the word of God in power and demonstration and know that he will follow it up. You see, he watches over his word to perform it. The problem is, is right now folks are standing around with their hands in their pocket instead of laying hands on the sick. Park behind a camera just like us. Instead of reaching out to the needs of the world. But the word of the Lord says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he shall deliver us out of them all. And here's the key. When you begin to be what God has called you to be, and when you begin to step out in what God has called you to step out in, you're going to meet opposition. You're going to meet naysayers. You're going to have people tell you, You're irresponsible. But I'm going to tell you what. The word of the Lord said the time would come when men would not endure sound doctrinal teaching. Yep. But he put to themselves teachers having itching ears. We're there, folks. There's not a teacher or preacher can protect you. You need a relationship in the Lord. And the only way you can get it, this is what the word of the Lord says. The word of God is near you and even in your mouth. And I'm going to ask that we stand all across this building. You that are watching home, I encourage you just to focus your attention on what the Lord speaks to your spirit in these next few minutes. Because this is so important. The writer said this, The word of God is near you even in your mouth. If you believe in your heart and you confess him with your mouth, you shall be saved. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is so key and relevant in your life even right now. Because the word of God says the power of death and life is in the tongue. I've seen people stand and clench the back of a chair or a pew until their knuckles turn white. With the spirit of God dealing with them very deeply. And after the final prayer, they would leave the same way they walked in. I've watched that over my life. I can tell you this. With your mouth, you need to say yes to Jesus. With your mouth, you need to confess, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I need you so desperately, even right now. Lord, I am sick. I am sin sick. And I need a transformation in my spirit. That's the place it begins. And then when you say, Lord, come into my heart and come into my life, I yield it all to you. Lord, save me. Brother Larry wrote the song, if, if it was only me, would your Holy Spirit come? Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit has come to deal with your heart, to draw you into himself. For there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And that's the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask that we just bow our hearts. You that are watching my home, I want you to do the same. And pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Father, forgive me. And forgive this land. Lord, I, I declare today that I am and I have been a sinner. But today, God, I repent with bitter sorrow 
with brokenness and contrite spirit, Lord. As best I know how, I'm asking you, Lord, to save me. And I receive, through the blood of Jesus, the blood of the cross, salvation, which is free. Thank you, Father, for deliverance. Now purify my mind. Purify my thoughts. Help me understand your word as I read it. And teach me today how to follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to know that God's plan of blessing is upon your life already. And I know that those of you that are watching my Facebook, God is able to transform your life. I know that the message today is a very strong, very pointed, and hopefully very life-changing for you. And it is my heart's desire and prayer that as you move forward in the things of the Spirit of God, that you would trust Him in the evil day, having done everything else to stand. Stand having your loins girt about the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation, wherewith you would take the shield of faith, when we are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray always with prayer and supplication for the saints. Trust God because we're in a battle. But guess what? We have the great high priest. We have the captain of the Lord's host on our side. And God will sustain you even in this time. Amen and amen. Lord bless you today. I love you. My heart's prayer is that you would be encouraged. And if there's anyone this morning that needs prayer, I want you to just feel